best way to situate the flagpole and the statue of King Kamehameha and for what would be the best orientation and what would be the best location in this area. Um, but we're looking at flying only the one flag at this part, at the correct dimensions, the correct proportions of one to two. And um, we're looking at the already sort of process to, to get a bronze, probably a bronze statue of King Kamehameha III, but that's still flexibility there. The area of the park is nearly the same as you can see the body of the park, it's still grass, and uh, the paths are in the same location more or less. Um, and so, and then on this side, it's a little washed out, there's coconuts along the uh, King Street border, which carry over from the, the, the blaze hill, and also the wind to that um, sort of roll palm road comes up that uh, might be appropriate for the next evening and the other thing. Excuse me, is that how old this? That was a little bit. Did you say royal palms or something? No, coconuts. No, coconuts. We're trying to use as many community plants and as many native plants as possible. It's going to be a little challenging, but we're going to do our best to use the most amount that we possibly can. What was your question? I said it was a little out of focus. Victoria is in between Victoria and 
was probably the greatest queen that I've ever had on um, life. Uh, and um, on this side of the, this, the, uh, the, the park, and now I'm keeping the middle of the park the same. And we're just fixing up the area around the bathroom and the storage area to create more area for the storing of the additional equipment that will be here and for the trellis work and possibly for some small little concession that might serve some, some, some small food types. And there's a walkway off, again, the walkways are all off the street, so you have the planting between you and the cars. That's still going to be a bathroom from there? Yes. So you need a bathroom. In the middle of the park, it stays, it stays, pretty, stays pretty much the same. The four banyans stay there. Um, we're working on a management plan for the, the banyans at the moment. So we're looking at how the city's never had a plan for how to maintain those banyans and keep them in all their glory. And so we're, we're working on that at the moment. Uh, before this goes much further, we should really have the right maintenance and the right strategy for keeping those banyans in tip-top shape. And the picture in the middle is just a little bit fuzzy, I guess. That's Princess Kailani, I think, with the white dress, and she's in the main entry. I don't see a focus on that. I guess you can use the video to look at the other What does it seem like this best part of the area? No, that's a zoom. It's another. Okay, oh, she's holding a branch. Yeah. Um, the fountain is exactly the same size. We're not doing anything different with the It's eight feet and say eight feet. Um, we're actually considering mm -hmm. maybe making the whole middle of the area uh, some guts or a, a, a material which would allow the next amount of water to go down and, and keep the roots alive instead of a, a paving type material which would maybe be in conflict. So we're looking at something more from the trees perspective. And then uh, on the right is what we'd like to do is we'd like to try some line on the bands. The bands are such really neat, interesting root systems and such. It might be something really interesting to do. These trails that are leading up to the, the big, the, the, the um, Union Jack. How is that concrete or how do you look at that? We haven't figured that out yet. It could be stone dust, it could be like a, a coral dust or a stone dust type material, or it could be paving. I, I think we're, we just haven't decided yet. And um, that's still working hard on this. Did you say you were going to take off all the trees? No, no. Oh, okay. No, the banyan trees are absolutely the same. No, no, but what about the other trees, the ones with the red? Seeds. Some get transplanted, some, uh, there's a variety of uh, different uh, things we're doing to try to open up the spaces, but uh, it, it's, it's a mix. Some of them stay, some of them go, some get transplanted, it's a mix. Um, but I, I, I have to go through, and meet, we're still meeting on the trees, and that's part of the management plan, also the uh, same discussion. So now the decisions have been made yet. So when you look at the park, um, this slide just shows you. The areas that are, have like sort of a, 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 a tent to it, around the edges, that is new. That's where changes are taking place. Everything in the middle of it's staying the same. So roughly half or greater than half of the park doesn't get changed. So I just want to think the purpose of this meeting was uh, we were trying to reach out to cultural practitioners and we wanted to make sure that we covered the, the historical elements of this park of the presentation, covered some of the history. Uh, sort of elements that we're trying to accent the park. You know, the first thing is the, the line flag. We want, we want to put a historical uh, flagpole, flagpole that would have been represented at that time period, 1843. And so we're using the uh, line palace as a comparison. And I believe that was 40 feet, about 40 feet. And so we're looking at finding the line flag, the, the, the correct proportion, which is one to two. And uh, it would be I think the third or fourth site in the state that only flies on line fly. So I um, think that's a nice, um, it's appropriate for the park. Uh, then you have, uh, yeah, we budget some money for the Statue of King Commander III. That's the web address for the uh, request for proposal. And the deadline for artists is October 2nd. Uh, yeah, October 2nd of this year. The installation date is a month before the 175th anniversary date. And with all the things that King Commandia the third did, uh, this park has got a couple of them. You know, he created the World One Band, the state motto. He made one the flag, the official flag. Um, and uh, of course the rest of rest, well, the restoration day. So we think this is really the best spot to do a statue of King Commandia the third. I mean, plus it's, uh, it's 
brought it up the street on King Street. And so that's one of the reasons why we think King Street is the only street. The other three streets are, are three Caucasians, like Ward, Baratania, and Victoria. So the King Street is an oldest street, and it's also got the other sensor to keep him in at the park. So I think that's the reason to put him on this side of the park. We're, we're starting the um, rear stack um, pattern in the, in the walkways, except for the area fronting what uh, would be the uh, performance area. The performance area doesn't need to go, we'll probably build that, that, that also that leg out, so it would be very similar to the existing uh, rear stack. Uh, the Royal Hong Band did play here. This is uh, Queen Inland Square, I believe. But uh, they did play here for about 20, 30 years. And in the newspaper, it was on Wednesday or Tuesday, and we took how many drunks they arrested the night before, and what the, the song was. And uh, then they, they celebrate when they actually put lights in the park because they could better keep disorderly conduct. And we'll tell that story. So, what I mentioned earlier was there's a lot of history in this park. So, right now, there's a wonderful plaque uh, that tells the history, but we'd like to expand upon that. We think there's a really great opportunity to tell a longer story. Uh, the restoration, uh, the restoration event, the months leading up to the five months leading up to it. I think there's a good opportunity to tell the story about the Hawaiian flag. We're just sort of telling about this, the same model, the home of the Royal Hawaiian Band for 30 years, the Ainau Band entries. So we think there's opportunities to tell all these stories in an expanded, expanded manner in the park. And this is not, nothing to decide about how to do it, but we think, we think these are really great opportunities. And if someone goes to this park and they leave it, they know more about the history of our state and why this park is a special park. It's not just about four bands and not found, it's about the history that shaped us. And so, of course, we're protecting all the four bands that I mentioned earlier, which are historic. But we're restoring the fountain. We're going to keep the 80 foot fountain built in 1932 with the plaque to. Uh, this is Castle, first president and after circle. We're probably going to paint the bottom of the pool black, which is the way they, they did it back in those days. I think they used black tile, but we're going to have that same black effect. And we're going to retrofit the uh, intake for the water so it can churn the leaves better, try to find a way so it doesn't get clogs on them. So the fountain will operate year round more often. So I've been asked a lot of times about the closure of the park. Um, we decided to postpone the closure to August 15th to allow the Hoya to take effect. And they're coming for two days this year. Um, and also, it's a way that the one or two occur in the park for a long period of time. And then the park will reopen in February or sooner. Um, we've been asked about whether the permit changes, whether the park will change its uses. And the answer is no. And the park reopens all the same permit holders will issue permits. The only difference is that private services will be issuing the permits instead of parks. And this is what we wanted to uh, close um, the discussion today and have a discussion about what is the appropriate location and orientation of both the statue and the flag. And so we'd love to hear from you folks what your thoughts are on how it should, where it should be and uh, what the orientation should be. Does anyone have any thoughts on it? I think if we can um, say at the, at the present, we had anticipated that the um, statue, which is here, would be facing toward King Street, because we saw that as the, um, the, the most appropriate view being Statue of Commandment III, as well as that large thoroughfare being King Street and also provide an, um, the opportunity. We imagine that this, very much like the Command Man statue, is going to be something that people will want to come to, will want to visit, um, will, will perhaps want to dress out like we do presently at Command Man, and will want to photograph and want to anticipate those kinds of things in advance. Yes? Have you reached out to the Hawaiian community on that? Actually, uh, not, only like, not only the civic clubs and stuff, Yes, we have. Yes, and um, we're hoping for much more participation.
participation this evening from a variety of other groups, but yes, there have been conversations. Do you have a, um, a thought? The only thought I have on this is, it's is a great idea. The problem is, is it's not going to be all done at one time. So if it's going to be four to six months of the park closed, it'd be great if it all got finished in four to six months. But just doing the graphs and cutting the trees in four to six months, that's not acceptable. It's either got to get all the funding at one time or just hold up on it until you get the funding for it. Because shutting down the park in six months, is, that's crazy. Well, and also to appreciate the point, um, you know, also to clarify, it, it is the only time that the, that we intend to close the whole park, even for future phases. And we should probably also clarify that the paths that you see there are not part of the first phase. Right? So the, the, the paths aren't there at the end of the first phase. The first phase um, includes the um, scraping of the, of the present grass, regrading, irrigation, new grass. Uh, I, I always perceive when you do a construction project, the big ports are the, you know, the construction of bandstand, construction of the bathrooms, construction of the statue and all this other stuff, and not so much the, the grading of the grass. So when I, when I hear it's going to be six months and then they're going to do another part two and a part three, I'm going, well, that's another six months, another three months, another two months. And it's like, this part going to be shut for years. Well, so that's, that's, that's the perception I get based on projects. And I do a lot of projects for the federal government. And I tell you, so, it doesn't look correct. So it's an engineer. So this, this swap web will be. Yeah, we don't even know what that's going to be. There's a new side of it for during the construction. So when this construction happens, this will be closed. When we're done with that, then we'll move on to the next one. So the future phase will be phased. Only little pieces of it will be closed just to do the work in the immediate area. We're not going to close the whole park. But the, the grass inundation is the body of the park, the 6.2 acres is mostly grass inundation. So uh, we, have, we have three <coughs> options, and we said all three of them. One option was to sell the whole park. And that would cost them a half a million dollars. And it'll be open really quick. Yeah. Um, that was seen as uh, uh, two deluxe, or two, uh, it was really unacceptable. So the next option we looked at was phasing the park, closing a piece of it, and then closing the next piece, you know, and opening the piece before it, so we go around and do one quadrant at a time. And the, the reason that would be more expensive too, we weren't sure how much the cost would be, but you're demobilizing and mobilizing different equipment. So you bring in one piece of equipment for the beginning of the phase, the first quadrant, and then you bring in the last equipment, and then you bring in the first quadrant for the next phase. So you keep bringing stuff on and off, and you pay for that. And so this was seen as the quickest and the cheapest way to do a quality um, project. And so at the moment, the project is phase to the rest of the irrigation for the whole park. And then phase two, we have $1.5 million and we're looking at trying to do this part of the park for that $1.5 million. So uh, it might include some more, but we're still in the early stages of looking at how much this would cost, how much this would cost, how much these improvements would be so we could get one piece of the park done. Well, we start. Uh, um, you're going to close the whole park, right? Or and just the grass flat grass. But what about the top part? Are you going to eventually, in phase two, disassemble that wall and everything? Why are you going to flat grass? The wall, the wall stays. The wall, the wall stays. is staying. We're not, we're not doing anything to the wall. The so wall is the center center. Oh, wall. The center center. Oh, the center center. 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 Oh, we'll say the same way too if we're time long because that they might eventually be elongated, but it might just say that it might, may, might never change. When you say you're going to close the park, does that include the sidewalks, especially the uh, Baritania side sidewalks? Uh, the sidewalks remain open. The park will be close to the park boundary. So if you're uh, familiar with the, the sidewalks there, there's presently a green line that uh, was recent. Yeah, it was recent. I actually, I actually have video of them coming and making yeah. the new boundary so, so they could arrest people. The park people. will be close to the park boundary. The sidewalks are all remain accessible during uh, So which side of the green line are you going to close? The inside. Everything inside the green line. Yeah, well, this we have, we're, it's Wait, closed for us. You mean it's the closed. cement area inside the green line is closed too? Yes. Part of right. the Everything area. within the park boundary. Where are we going to Are you, are you pulling the planters at that time? Uh, we're, the no planters eventually are coming off the sidewalk. It's there's 
no time washing. And by the time the, the entire project is completed, the planters will be off. Um, we just at this point, I can't commit to saying the planters will be off at the end of the first phase. So are you going to dig up the, the cement up to that green line and plant grass? Well, because if you're not, then you can't close that. We, we are going to be working on the upper That's terrace. a good point. And I think are you going to plant grass behind the green line? That's my, my And point. it's not just grass, no. But we are going to be working on the upper terrace. I think as Chris mentioned, it wasn't initially anticipated. And now that we, did, we didn't have our entire second phase fully funded. So phase one has the budget for you guys to close everything behind the green line in that area where we do food not bombs every single That's Sunday. That's right. That's my question. Well, Since 2011. What we said is we said we would find a suitable location for food not bombs. Where is our suitable location? Well, we, we haven't had that conversation yet. So you know, it was in the park. Uh, you need to give yeah, us a location. I, I thought we were going to stay in that, that area. Yeah. That's what we were That's told. the impression we got. We were going to stay up there because it was not in an area that they were going to do any any changes. So well, let's, let's that's what's going to happen. They're going to be a big fight. Well, I can see them. Oh, big time. Yeah. Big. I mean, we promised it. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Because that's what you told us. You told us you're going to give us that cement spot. Yeah. I, I knew this, but I just like to ask. I, it's the most beautiful thing to me about food not bombs. Where are the trees? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry mm -hmm. to see that you're taking mm -hmm. some down. Is it because of the pattern of things you're doing? Or is it in general? Because it seems like you are We're still talking about the trees. We haven't decided on everything at this point. We're in a meeting this week and talk more about the management of the trees. Mm -hmm. And we'll finalize the at that time. I also understand that the restroom is at one age, but you can't go this Yeah. Well, uh, we, we are going to fix up the restrooms probably also in phase two. Mm -hmm. Probably that's the other So we'll, we'll do this area here, and then we're also looking at doing the, the restroom and fixing those up. Mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. so there's money in the budget for the bathrooms too, because I thought that was phase two. There's $1.5 million dollars in phase two. That's, uh, we're trying to figure out where we're going to send it. And at this point, we're looking at this area, and we're looking at the bathrooms. So if we have uh, 100 for the anniversary, we have that part of the park finished, and we have the bathrooms in, in like good condition. So that, at the moment, is the plan. Are, are you going to provide other public bathrooms available for people in the area while you're closing down the bathrooms there? Good question. Well, uh, well this is a construction site? No. That's not anticipated. The bathrooms are, are there principally to, to serve the park users. Park when users the park using. reopens, we're going to do our best to clean it and get that get the existing bathrooms serviceable so when the park reopens, they can be used and then no upgraded in, in, in the whole area, the whole city, and people go there. Yeah. The people yes. of the area. Major hygiene there. place. I'm not only talking about homeless, I'm talking about people of the Taxi yeah, it's bus drivers. I mean, bus buses. Drivers, they, they, you almost need a ported potty in that area to be a replacement. You got people going on the street. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I think it's an important thing to note, and we'll, we'll certainly take that down. As I said, the um, the uh, the placement, the present placement of the restrooms and Thomas are anticipated for the park users. So we were figuring we're going to we're going to close it uh, that there wouldn't be. Uh, we wouldn't be replacing that service, there's, there's but we will take that note. Yeah, yeah. it's definitely because if there's not very many bathrooms in the area anyway. They've cut down, and you know you can go to McDonald's or Burger King, but that's you know maybe at yeah. night you know it's not yeah. if they're closed off. And the closure of sidewalks and bathrooms has been used as a tactic on those lower on the hierarchy, and and those who do not have permanent places to sleep. We've seen it. We've witnessed it. We've we got it on it. video. We got it on video. They, they, they close sidewalks off literally to some people. Other right. people are allowed in. Right. So they do this with bathrooms as well. There is a long stand. And you see the planners there? That's an example of them trying to keep people out away from the, let's say, the, uh, exactly. what was the Museum of Arts. And, you know, this it, it proof positive. If you don't believe it, look at the planners. So they will use this as a tactic on uh, people, free association. Also, during the grass planting stage, is it Enterprise Services or is it still Parks and Rec? Enterprise Services um, will, will be, well, in February, you said at an earlier meeting. We so. would be um, 
the transfer will be completed by the time the park reopens. So we're using that period, this period of time. So technically, Parks and Rec is closing the park. Right. Technically, that would and be. And where's correct. Parks and Rec here at these meetings? I'm Are you sorry. Parks and Rec? I'm Parks and Rec. Yes. I would like to have it on record that I really think it's inappropriate to have that um, enterprise services take over management of a public park. Um, you don't see them taking over Kapiolani Park, that's for a reason, you know, and they're the ones that manage the shell and all these places that, like, people are, you know, people were upset when you st couldn't take coolers into the shell and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And so it's, it's kind of a slow creep into, like, taking this park toward um, enterprise rather than public park. So I think it's a totally inappropriate um, um, management entity. Well, I certainly can appreciate the comments, and then, you know, as I personally noted, I know Chris has, and um, as I've said in, in some of the previous um, presentations, the, the purpose is to get the services that we provide at Blaze Dell um, onto the grounds at Thomas Square to provide, it, provide upkeep, upkeep at a level that presently isn't uh, being provided by parks, and not that they don't want to, it's that Tom Score is one of a series of parks that the same crew moves around and the takes care of. The city leases it from the state, right? The city leases this land from the state? No, the sure. state uh, transferred the control yeah, of this parcel city. by executive order to the city. Yeah. So the city controls the parcel. Um, but it's, it was done by executive order, but what was it? Um, the state still holds the, the land. It's just they will the title and yeah. fee, yes. And, and are you going by the, the? I guess that's covered under the way parks are regulated, that law, or does it go to the territorial law? It, because you don't have a deed for this property, saying what it just it just says use as a park. In, in yeah, so what, it, what are the specific uh, It doesn't say use as a park, it what? says the, it, the, the state transferred it to, the state transferred this parcel to the city for the purpose of, and on the purpose line, I think you've seen it, it says the purpose is Thomas Square. It doesn't say for the purpose of a park or the purpose of anything else. It's kind of strange, and actually I think it's a little, um, it's, it's a little disconcerting that the purpose is Thomas Square, so that leaves a little bit of interpretation of what is the purpose. at this point from King Street of the sidewalk? What's the... I believe feet? we asked for at least 24 to 30 feet. Because I know that Kamehameha the Great, when we do the lay draping, you know, for us it's a June 11th or around that day, it's a big day, and there's a lot of us that gather from the community, the fire trucks are there with the lay, and, you know, and granted that's a much taller 
statue. I don't know if this will be on a pedestal, um, but I just suggest maybe a little more space. What would you suggest for suggest gathering? Um, well, how much is the space between the statue and the flag? What's that? Just a walkway? Just a walkway? Maybe 50 feet, maybe 50, 70, maybe 75 feet. No, maybe I agree. Because he's so tall. What would be your. What would be your um, or, or maybe put it this, this way. Street to I don't know that I've never measured, but that space works very comfortably. And maybe that is 24. I just don't know. Spatially, be I, to measure that. I think because when we gather, and, and I know that having the statue of Kamehameha the third there, not speaking on behalf of the Hawaiian community, but knowing how we gather, um, we would find this. You know, anytime we have statue of our ali'i, especially on their birthday, we gather. Um, and for La Hoi Hoi Ea, 100% gathering around that statue to mahalo him to be part of that. So I think just making sure that it's a comfortable, large enough area for, for large groups to gather safely away from King Street. Um, so even just if it's moving back closer to the flag, because I love having the flag behind him, flying above him. I think that looks tremendous. I think that'll be a beautiful sight when you're, especially when you're standing at the Blaisdell and taking that in. Um, but my only thought would be that it's a little too close to King Street perhaps if it's less than that 24 feet. Um, Again, I don't know the footage from uh, the feet from King to Kamehameha the Great. I don't know how far, but that's plenty of space in front of Ali Hill and Hollywood. I think we'll measure that and maybe put them close together. And the flag, Tori, can you speak for a moment about the dimensions of the flag for that for that flag? What's the proper size of the flag for a 40 foot flag ball? Uh, it would have a 10 foot flag. It would be a 5, yeah. five, five by 10 foot flag would be flying from a 40 foot flag. Um, that's a pretty Pretty, um, it's a, definitely a custom flag. It would look amazing. And it would be, and it would be quite, yeah, it would be quite. Didn't nice. Kumu Cheng tell you the proper dimensions of the Hawaiian flag at one, last one meeting? Two. I had an had incorrect. But I think the Friends of the Olympic Palace purchased the correct dimensions. Yeah. So they have, I'm on the board, but they have the <laughs> dimensions of that flag and they already order it from flags and things or wherever it is. So it's already a special order type of thing anyway. Um, but that would just look amazing. I think just having that large flag behind. Bring the fire truck on without fire No, the fire, what I mentioned the fire truck, the, fire truck. the way you know, had the great the statue. statue. Yeah, she's he's on, a, he's on a white yeah. pedestal that goes way up here. So to put lay on Kamehameha the Great, we need the fire, the cherry picker, right. the arm to put the lay. But this statue, like Lilibu, Kapiola, uh, Kapiola, and Kalaka. Well, Kalaka was actually on a Kuhio. pedestal as well. But Kuhio, I'm guessing, would be lower to the ground. Aye. So you wouldn't require all of them. You know, a ladder would be sufficient. But I guess my concern is just the close proximity to King Street. That when they gather, when we gather, we gather in force with Aloha, but to offer lei, to offer hokuku, and that may not be enough space comfortably for everyone, whereas everyone would be on the sides in the grass. So I think if the statue were pushed back, Closer to the flag, closer to the flag that he, as you say, you know, proclaimed here would be a little more comfortable, I think, in general. But that's just my two cents. That's just my 35 cents. Well, that, that's the reason why we're here today, was to try to comment on these two locations, because these two lost variables that we're still trying to work out those details. And then we're planning on putting the, whatever interpreted display it is, brass black, uh, and, uh, letters in the paving, Whatever is the best way to tell those stories I mentioned earlier. We're planning to be in this general area also. So, so bigger plaza or just the, uh, set back further from the road? I think just further from the road, but I, I mean, I don't know how far is too far, but I think just it looks from this map, it looks awfully close to King Street. Okay. So, we'll, yeah. so we'll move we'll this back. One of, one of the uh, more recent versions of the, this part of the master plan that had dimensions on it when we met with the consultants had it only 12 feet back and we asked, asked them to double it to 24 and that's why it said that's what it um, should be in the Why do you say if I just I can't think about how far 24 feet is? How far is that? I have, thank you. But, but I think the more important thing is, um, you know, it, from the, your, your perspective, the area in front of uh, the command has statue is sufficient for gathering mm -hmm. that we would want at least that much, that distance from. The and there's a nice, it's just a nice courtyard around it. Looks like there's one there in the cement. I mean, it's just a nice place to gather 
once a year and off we lay. Yes. I, I think that uh, history is one of the, I mean, everybody has history, we all have traditions, but uh, I don't think there's, in, in today, today, these days, things so put up statues, they're incredibly expensive to set up and maintain. I would think you'd be better off investing in, the, in some other aspect of the park or something else than something that can help the public because money is very high and to be spending lots of money on something like a statue just doesn't seem to fit the times to me. Well, I, I certainly uh, um, uh, appreciate your money on that. I, I feel that we're strongly committed to doing the statue of Commander Mitchell and really do believe it's a appropriate way to uh, honor him. And he hasn't been honored before, but I certainly understand your perspective on it. Uh, yes. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is in regards to the paths. When you do this irrigation system, will the paths disappear? I, I, I got that impression from the first meeting when you said. Well, they, they, they will disappear for one year until the next phase comes in and does the paths. Yeah. So do you have the budget to put them back, or is that part of the 1.5 million? Will we? Uh, will they have to be? You you have to wait until another budget session to get the money. That's the one. That we're still working on. May may or may not be. May or may not have to wait. But these two. That, this part will most likely be done. And these. He's, uh, he's made it the funds to do those two. And you're disappearing the other path that completes the Union Jack on the other side right We're there. Trying to create a space for um, the city, the, whatever sort of performance area ends up being so So, you know, breaking up, we're trying to create a place where people can sit around. But it will disappear the Union Jack. It will disappear all the circles. At this point, uh, and have everybody sitting in the no, What I would say is that the, the performance area is still not definitely going to happen. It's not in any of the budgets at this point. So what happens there may still, um, may still change. I, I don't know. We're, just not, we're not budgeting the performance area at this time. Yeah, oh, sure. Um, since you're talking about moving the statue uh, a, a, a little bit, do, do you have it in mind of deciding how tall the statue is? Or mm -hmm. how high it will be off the ground, for example? The reason I'm asking is that uh, I know it's possible, I think it's possible, I've seen simulations and the way you might imagine how something is set up, view planes. Is there a way you can generate the view planes based on how tall the statue is? Uh, since it isn't aligned with the flag behind it, so how it might look to a pedestrian, to somebody driving by, to somebody across the street. Uh, I think if there's a way to look at that, you know, for, for the best effect, yeah, uh, maybe you can generate that by computer. I, I, I think the only um, the only variable that we haven't accounted for yet, and we know the height of the flagpole, yeah. we, we have specified a scale for the statue. Is that correct, Lori? No, that will be determined to the artist. Right now, it's a request for qualification. Once the artist finalists have been selected, they will present our proposal, their proposals. And so when you see the proposal, you will see the rendering and the actual scale of And then and we can, they can imagine that yes. that'd be a, a shame if we built everything and, oh, geez, if we had moved that five feet yeah. further back or forward, you know. Right. And so when the proposals are, uh, are submitted, we will work with them on the exact location, taking in all this public input. Okay. Hey, you, would, you would think that they would come up with standard size. This is what we want it to be. And then you build your design based on what you want, based on the weight, instead of going, you know, this is size statue and all those kind of things. We do that. We wanted this, and this is approximately what it's mm -hmm. going to look like. It could be a combination of designs, but it should fit within that, that framework. Leaving it up to this is kind of like leaving it up it's too much, too much openness where you don't, you can, it can be anything. It can be a modern statue of, a 1920 vintage type looker, you know, 1960s or I can't tell, and that's a bad thing because you're not telling us. But you just say, "Well, it should be here. It should be this far." So, especially now with all the computer design stuff, you think we'd be able to put some kind of simulation? What? Uh, and I, I apologize because I can't recall. Sorry. What's our timeline on the RFQ? October seventh. Um, the application deadline is October 2nd. 
It, it then goes to committee review. The finalists will be selected in November 2016. The finalists will develop their proposals from December to February 2017. Presentations will be given in March 2017 with the final selection in May 2017. Now, um, the, se the se selection is going to be made by the commission, the commission and, and the, the, the MOCA commission. Right. But the discussion, their discussion will be in the normal open, open process, session. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All our commission meetings are open. So there's opportunity to, for community to weigh in on the finalists. Correct. Correct. Yeah, so at the um, finalist presentation in March, it is a public meeting. So um, the public can attend and listen to all the finalist presentations and give comment afterward, as well as at the May 2007 meeting. Mark March is the finalist presentation, right? Correct. It's all online at that time. Uh, is it going to be a bronze statue or is it going to be? Is there? And I can't recall if we specified the material. Uh, the, it's it's um, suggested that the material be bronze, but it's not dictated specifically to the artist. So it's, as long as it's of an outdoor durable material. Take a couple more questions, and if there's no more questions about the scope of the social and fire, we'll, we'll take a couple more questions. Well, I have a, I have a question. Uh, my name is H. Doug Matsuoka. I'm um, part of a contingent of uh, regular users. We have a food not bombs there every Sunday since uh, 2011. Now, we use the, we use the um, sidewalk part of the park. They actually change the boundary there in order to arrest people inside on the under the park rules. And anyway, um, my question is, we like that spot. It's really great. Um, we didn't ask for the, any changes to be made uh, to the park. Um, I know the dog, dog users didn't ask for that. And uh, this past Sunday, big group of families on the uh, Victoria side using it as they frequently do. I don't think they asked for changes in the park. Now, the public is paying for this. Who asks for the changes here? Who does it benefit? I'm thinking, you know, this is some public use to benefit tourists or people that have not yet moved here, perhaps, that are moving into Kaka'ako area, making it more real estate more attractive to them. I mean, who asks for these changes? Well, I don't think the city needs to wait for somebody to ask for changes in, in every case to make changes. And I think this is one where this park, as Chris had pointed out, has really kind of gone. Um, somewhat neglected on a large scale since 1967. And this is really an opportunity to truly honor the events that have happened at this place, as well as to kind of create a place that uh, returns its stature to a gathering place for the people of Honolulu. It's not intended for visitors. It's intended to celebrate our own history in our city center. Well, get it has been a gathering place. La Ho'i Ho'i every Every July since 1987, the powwow people use right. it. They didn't ask for any changes. Not as much as that we would like to see people use it. I, I think okay. we, for myself, I can say that our goal is to have cultural and ethnic events and festivals like that monthly. Which, really which brings up your goal to place to have our cultural events in Honolulu. Which brings up my second question. You said that all permitted uh, activities will continue, and some of the community uses. You know, my point of view for the for the my group of people is that we're a First Amendment citizens group, and we don't need permits to use the park. Um, I'm very suspicious that uh, this this change is going to be used to um, prohibit my bunch of guys. You said some of the community uses, so some of the community uses are going to be excluded. Who are who's on the Who's on the blacklist? I prefer just to the permitted events. And, uh, we well, you said you said all of the permitted uh, uses and uh, some of the community no, uses. And I think what we can what we can clarify is that although it's an administrative decision to determine the department that has management and control of the of the parcel of the square, um, in order to adopt rules to operate within that, we have to go through our normal rulemaking. Process. That's right. And so there's there will be community dialogue on on rules for Thomas Square. But there's no community the oversight over the decision. You guys make the you guys make the decision. You can make whatever decision, whatever rule that you want. 
That's the well, problem. That we can, is we the can make, you can charge us to go inside. You can ban coolers and if chairs, I, like you said. You were gonna rent chairs and art supplies. You can ban us from bringing chairs in, just like Waikiki Shell and everything else. You can control the concession. We won't be able to bring in our soda. You won't be able to bring in a bottle of water. Or and the food that will sell it. And especially the, uh, not food, not bombs. Especially. That's and because right. we and make our own food out of our own pockets. The rulemaking process is the appropriate time to have this discussion again, and I'm, I'm certain we will. We but with regard to charging any kinds of fees, as I said in the hey. last meeting, I uh, will say it again, that all of the uh, all of my department's fees are set by ordinance, which means they're a law, which means I can't charge a fee that the council doesn't approve. So there's no guarantee to the public that once Enterprise Services takes over in February that we still will be able to bring in chairs and, and sodas and, and whatever. Charged. There is no guarantee. That's right. There's no guarantee. Once you guys take over in February, you, can do you have you. every single opportunity and defined by your name, Enterprise Services are in the money making business. So. Free not, access? Not to I mention it's suspect, it's, it's suspect because at a time when um, a lot, you know, the city is saying we're so strapped for money, we can't do this for the homeless, we can't do that for the homeless, you can spend a million dollars on this, you know? Yeah. Which I agree has been neglected. This park has been sorely neglected for so long by so many administrations. But because of that, the timing is suspect because because every, you know, the rail project has bled everything out of everything else. And, and <clears throat> then they say, oh, we, we don't have enough money to like do this uh, public program for the, for the homeless. So, you know, the money is just, it just seems suspect of the timing. Especially since they only have this year. Do you have uh, water shops? Yeah. Yes. How many? Um, water, are you talking about the fountain that's in the park or water? Drinking fountains. I think it's a necessity. Oh, right. Yeah, um, there is by the bathroom. There is by the bathroom. There should be at least two, and maybe, yeah, at least two, I'd say, on the side, and that's much more important than anything else in there. You guys should use the damn park before, well, like, changing it around. But, but, you know, these are important things. Well, These I, are important I, I questions. Ask the lady in the back. Do you have any questions? Everyone else has asked questions here so far. You know, I'm sorry I, I came in late, uh, but I've been getting some update from Kainoa. And um, I guess one of the things was that he was mentioning that um, I guess your department would, in fact, be taking over the administration of the park. Correct. Would that be correct? Yes. And you know, I think your department, your organization is already burdened with all of the responsibilities that you already have. I think with the shell and the stadium and everything else. And I really think that the park itself should really be administered by the people. You know, I think we've had so many organizations administering so many things and then moving them together under one head because we have too many, um, you know, duplicate organizations. Mm -hmm. So I really feel that the, the park itself should be let alone until there are numerous meetings among the community and among all of the different organizations so that they can have their input. And I, I was just told by Kaino, this is his first meeting, but there have been other meetings. And you know, I pride myself on thinking that I am uh, well informed about what happens in my community, but I see that I'm not informed. And so if I'm not informed, I'm sure many other people are not informed. So, uh, oh, and I'm sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, my name is Colleen Ayu. Um, you know, I'm a kumuhula, and I've had um, really personal relationships with the park. Um, our Ahamui Ka'iulani, um, you know, is named for Princess Ka'iulani, whose father initially helped to landscape some of it. Uh, my mother had her first, very, very first, uh, recitals at the park under the banyan tree. So, you know, I, I think that yes, you're mandated to have so many um, public meetings before you move ahead. But, you know, as I said, I always felt that I was informed about my community and my city. And coming today, I don't feel that I'm informed. And knowing that, 
I feel that many others are probably not informed, and instead of having so much trouble later, we really should not rush into it because it could happen in February of next year, which is a very short time. Um, and, and so I, I'm sorry I didn't introduce myself and that I'm late, but in just hearing that and quickly reading through the pamphlet that Kainoa shared with me, I think that there has to be more reason why on your end that we should do this. I don't think the public should be burdened with the reason of why we should save things. I think we hire elected officials to always be on the watch to save community, um, environments, open spaces for us. We shouldn't have to come with a list of 100 reasons why we feel that this might not work. I think you should come up with 100 reasons telling us why this would be so beneficial for the community. So I, think so too. I don't know where you are in the discussion, but that was just my thought after a brief listening. Thank you. Oh, 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 thanks. So earlier, sorry for <coughs> earlier, you mentioned that you don't have to use it as a park because they just turn it over to you. So you're using the latest EO and okay. Yeah, I'm not saying we don't have to use it as a park. I mean, I, so what I said was that the, the EO specified that the purpose of the transfer was for it to be Thomas Square. So certainly, our intention is that it's, you know it is Thomas Square. It continues to be Thomas Square, and all of the things that we want to do. So including with the transfer to enterprise so service, you have to treat the honors it as Thomas Square and what we have historic what historically has happened in this place and traditionally has happened in this place. But so far as you you have to treat it like a park. Are you going by that precedent? And I wanted to also ask uh, what 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 were some of the uh, administrative rules things? And is it you deciding it's enterprise service decide. that and or does council get involved? But go on. So administrative, well, administrative rules, council doesn't directly get involved in administrative rules. So administrative rules is really, is, is dictated by statute, so it's a, it's a state law that lays out the process by which this has to happen. So the, the, the department um, does the initial drafting of the rules, takes it out to a community meeting, uh, has publicized, I can't remember, it's 30 days or 90 days, there's some period of time from when you publicize so you can hold a meeting. We have a meeting on the rules. Um, if there are no substantive changes that come from the conversation with the community, then if the rules will go to go through the rest of its process. Ultimately, for the count uh, for the city, I believe the mayor would have to uh, sign off on them. If it was the state, the governor signs off on them before they become effective. Um, if there are substantive comments, which I would suspect that will be ha will happen in this case, then what the you can count statute on. requires is that we come back, the city regroups, revises, and comes back out with its revised proposed revised rules for another hearing, and that process continues until the the final rule is adopted. And, and you have to use it like a park. I just wanted to get that confirmed. You you have to use it as a park use. I mean, we intend to use it. They don't. Like I, I, I but you, you don't have to. No. Okay. We don't. That's why it's going to be a square. Okay. Right. Square. Right. Yeah, which is not which is not the intention. Right. The intention is to and the plan is to grass it. My concern is originally when this was discussed, there was a community discussion, and then all of a sudden it went into a special design district which nobody knew what was happening. It never went before the neighborhood boards until the very end where they already had all this thing figured out and said, okay, this is what we're going to do. All the discussion, I was in from the very beginning when this first started. I went to the meetings and we had discussions and stuff. But I don't see any of the stuff that we discussed. <laughs> the actual, all the stuff we brought up was not there. Yeah. And so it's like this was kind of like agreed to previously by some special design district people that really didn't take into consideration any of the discussion. So I kind of look at this as like, this is like a done deal, and that nobody's really looking at it, and they're not taking it into the community. They're not discussing the people in the park. They're not even going back. 
So I, I kind of like say this killed the deal because until you get it all put together as a solid thing, splitting up in three sections is really just delaying it from ever being done. And that is not a good idea to do it this way. It's already been tainted because of the way it was done and was discussed. And it's always going to be perceived as, oh, that was some design that was put yeah. together by some groups some that just wanted deal. to do it, and they didn't even bring it up to the community at all. And now we're just in the tail end trying to get it thrown in and say, okay, we agree to this. And that's bad. That's really bad. And we see a lot of that with the rail, all this other stuff. It's, it's you know, it's even with this, you know, the neighborhood board where they wanted to get rid of the neighborhood board because they didn't want to have discussions. It's right. the same kind of stuff. Written 
in public comment. Where's your place where we write the public comment uh, and it's recorded, documented for you to pull up and say right. these are what the public said. That all goes into your EIS. Yeah. That's, that's all yeah. part of your plan yeah. when you propose yeah. it. The work that we're doing in phase one is all exempt from the environmental process. Grass innovation is considered exempt from work for environmental work for, for city parks. It's an agreement that city has with Shifty, and most state agencies have that with Shifty. Most Actually, you're still in Shifty revision. Excuse me. I didn't yeah. hear you. I wanted to know as I was listening so how many meetings are planned, how many have been held, <coughs> and have members of different the Hawaiian community been informed? I think the exact number I have to get back to you. With well, number. you know, let me, let me just say this. You know, when you go to the dentist and he's going to work on your teeth, he's very clear as to what tooth he's going to work on. When you say to me, I'll get back to you because you don't know the number. We've, that had, we've had numerous meetings on this. Well, we've I, all I'm asking you is how many. So you've had 35 meetings. I can give you the exact number after this meeting. Okay, so you've had 35 meetings. meetings. You've had 35 meetings, 35 and what minutes. I would like to request as a public citizen, the date of all those meetings, the locations, and just a general comment as to were the people who attended in favor or against. And I think then, you know, we could save a lot of the city's money and effort by having a printout, and then that would probably stop a lot of the duplicate questions on the I can some of that information. Let me see what I have. Okay. I, need so your phone number, though. I, need your I know phone. the evening is late, so I'm going to sign in. Actually, what she asked for should already be available yeah, on the website. Yeah, really should. It's all public really information. Should. So phase, phase one is grass, but then phase two will be done in later. I mean, phase two is that the statue is the Phase two is the statue and, and the flagpole. I want to say something about your grass. You know, water is very precious. We have issues on water. And grass there should not be the major thing. But when I came in, I heard you said that a few times. I think we need to focus, as the woman said earlier, on the statue and what you're going to do. You know, I feel that I came here today to really be informed. And I, I feel like some of the information is being withheld purposely and that no information was available on handout to everybody. So thank you, and I'm sorry I interrupted for all of you. No, no. I'm sure you no, all have question. other things to say, but um, I would like to get notified, and my phone number is there, and I will call the mayor's office tomorrow and let him know that I request the information that I asked for. So okay. thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I couldn't find the mission for enterprise services, and that may supposedly guide your organization. Is there a mission? Could you state it Good versus question. Park's mission? I mean, yeah. the mission, the mission, you can find on the enterprise services uh, website. So go to the city website and you click down through all the departments. Does that are you required to be guided by that, or is that like a Mis uh, city mission statements are? Uh, yes, they are guides. Um, they're they're different yeah, from the um, you know they're different from rules or ordinances. They are guides, and basically our our mission is to provide educational and entertainment um, opportunities for the community and we are by mission expected to um, be self-sustaining to cover our own expenses. There you go. So we are basically expected to be a break-even um, operation. There you go. That's where you okay. charge money. Yeah. And um, along those lines, when you have permitted events, you could technically, if it were written in the rules, unless it conflicts with ordinance or you know HRS, you could close it off and have security kind of ask, you know, please leave uh, versus a parks permit, which doesn't exactly do that. Or right. is, that, is that correct? Or? I can tell you that our intention is that events that are held at Thomas Square are uh, free of charge, free of admission. 
if there is a fee that's associated, it's not going to be a fee that the that um, someone coming to the to the park for an event would be paying. There may be a fee that's associated with the organization that wants to hold the event there. Um, as I said, that uh, what the fee will be ultimately has to be passed by the council. So, so in the in the same way that uh, right now I believe the parks permit is like fifteen dollars. I'm not sure how they came up with. There would be some be associated with uh, permitted uses of the square. Ultimately, regardless of what it is the department wants, it's going to end up being what it what the council is willing to pass. So you could exclude some people if they don't pay oh, yeah. the fee then, from that area. Not from attendance. That's not the intention. But it, I know that's not the intention. But if it, it could be written in the permit that or written in the rules that you could. Uh, you know, exclude some people from being there, or if it's permitted to be closed off. You know that that's the concern of a lot of people. We want to mm -hmm. maintain free association for all people to go in the park under Parks and Recreation. That's fairly predictable. I don't know what it's like when you have shifts in leadership at, at uh, Enterprise Services or new mayors. That seems more dynamic, according with more business oriented uh, versus Parks and Rec, which is kind of you know. And for for Enterprise. Services. The one event that we have right now that I'd say events in Thomas Square would be the most like is uh, the weekly farmers market, where the you know there's one entity that arranges for the different um, vendors to be there, but for those of us from the general public that attend, there's no there's no fee, right? We we might pay for the meal or whatever it is we're getting, but we don't pay to be there. Those are the kinds of events that we envision for Thomas Square. But it could be closed off to certain people if, if, if that was wanted. That's that's what I'm trying to get. At. I should. If it's if it was permitted, if it was permitted in the final rule, then perhaps it could be. I, I, I'm saying at this point in time, um, I I can't think of a reason why that would be necessary because we anticipate free events. The last free purpose for the park, I think, is ceremonial. The very last. I think the important thing is how it helps the living being. Well, they have a working a place to go and enjoy the view of something that's beautiful uh, and not be surrounded by all Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that comment. Thank you for, again, spending your time with us this evening and sharing your... Okay, your that's it. Uh, kind of a uh, public uh, information, not a hearing at all. Nothing was heard, nothing was decided. Uh, much like the previous meeting but uh, you know with the repetition of the questions some of the questions were uh, more precise <laughs> If this uh, project is going to... You want to say something, Sam? They should have went before the neighborhood board when they first started. They should have. They should they should have, have, they should have hit it and had the, uh, the, the hospitals around the area decide. Yeah. They shouldn't have uh, kept it secret. And, uh, and it's not all bad. Yeah, no, but, it's not but, all bad. But the problem is the secrecy has made it to a point where people don't know what to expect. Yeah, as you say, it tainted the, the process. tainted the process really bad. Yeah. And to this to this point that maybe we just have the statue and the flagpole and forget about all the rest. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and I mean, because you know how important is is golf course grass? That's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Oh, we're gonna have nice grass. Well, you know, I think the grass is there is good enough. You know, leave. I say leave it the way it is. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see a problem. Why with this spend park. millions of dollars? Yeah. yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of things you can do with that park that doesn't cost the kind of money that they're pushing. Right. And um, I think they had already promised the statue and the flagpole to the wine community before they even started this thing. And they said, now, you yeah. know what, we got to go and finish this because we promised that. Yep. And I tell you, no, that's not how it works around here. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Thanks, Doug. Thank you, Misty. Thank you. Uh, Okay, that's it. We're gonna. We'll show you where we are. We're actually in kind of a historic area. This is the uh, old buildings here. By Honolulu that was the cultural uh, director of the city. Doesn't like us at all. 
And you know, if there's if this is beneficial for so many people, we're the boost. We're their guides. You know. Okay, thanks. We're gonna. There's a lot of discussion going on.